go out and drink. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do a snapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But what happens is these people do heroin and they go. Yeah. I've seen people on the bus all all junked out with their children. Oh, seriously? On the bus with the children in between their legs. They're oh passed God. out and the kids can't get out in between their legs. That's insane. And I had to, I, I called the cops one time. I had to oh. call the police. Wait, well, what happened? Uh, they came. I don't know what happened. I think they took their kids. I don't know. I, I, I got off the bus. Um, but I couldn't stand seeing that. There were a bunch of ladies sitting near me and they were like, what do we do? What do we do? I said, I'll show you what I do. And I called and the cops met us at the bus stop and that was it. Partner, I gotta get to work because my boss uh, is gonna kill me. Yeah. Your name? My name's Eric. Eric. Oh, sorry, Tom. I have to do the, the social distancing thing. Yeah, that's all good. But that's let's just do a, a virtual fist bump. You virtual. Got it, bro. Yeah, you my, got it. my name's Eric. What's your name? Tom. Tom? Yeah. Tom, you're the, the most inspirational person I met all day. Good. Wait, so last last question. If people wanted to get more into handiwork or construction, painting and stuff, what advice would you give people? Uh, call, call somebody that's reputable. Definitely don't don't call somebody just because the price is cheap. Yep. Doesn't mean it gets done proper. Do you, do you, uh, do you want to advertise your service? Well, this is actually my boss's service. Okay. It's uh, Northeast Paint and Restoration. Northeast Paint and Restoration. Yes. And uh, he does all facets. Um, slow down. Slow down. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Do you see that pegging me finger because I asked him to slow down. Do you know who he is? A, he, he, he got off his door. Look, look. 10 miles an hour with children around. He's yeah. driving like an a-hole. Yeah, what an asshole. Yeah. Eric, gotta go. Yeah, take care, guys. Nice All right, Grace, see you later, man. Right, keep up the hustle. Take care. Yes, sir. Yeah, watch out, watch out for the assholes. All right, so, uh, yeah, so to take it back. So yeah, actually, uh, the best thing about just like leaving your house and just going on a walk, get some fresh air and stuff like that, is you just don't know what to, to expect. There's gonna be like a quadrillion interesting things which are just kind of waiting for us. And uh, the reason why that happened was, apparently you're only supposed to stay local traffic 10 miles an hour. And uh, a lot of uh, a-holes are trying to kill me and run me over. But anyways, so also uh, another thing about photography and street photography is that I mean, this is just more of a philosophical question is, what do you like more, real life people or photographs of real life people? So for me, certainly the, the real life person is preferable than the, the photograph. And if I go psychoanalyze most photographers and street photographers I know, kind of weird people where, you know, you kind of like people, but you're kind of afraid of people. And the way you can interact with people is through uh, making photos of them. Now, you know, also this is where like Henri Cartier-Bresson's thinking is a little bit perverted. I don't really like it too much. How's it going, man? Looking good, looking good. Um, and so what I don't really like is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, photographers and visual artists and stuff like that, they essentially want to turn they want to mummify living things into photographs and rather than delighting in the joy of life. So, you know, even Henri Cartier-Bresson's like, yo, you're not allowed to talk to people, blah, blah. But dude, Henri Cartier-Bresson was like, kind of like a weirdo. He's like really into like hunting and he's, he essentially saw street photography as kind of like a human safari and zoo. And you know, he's, he's definitely has some like sort of like personal issues where, you know, his whole life he kind of grew up with a silver spoon, grew up super rich, but you know, he's like, like a, a lot of people, he's like, yo, I gotta like, you know, you know, he, he wanted to be anti-bourgeoisie, but he's the ultimate bourgeoisie. Um, and so, his photos are great, but his personality is, you know, and like also simple things like he didn't let other people photograph him in the face. So I'm like, yo, use like, use a hypocrite. It's like you're photographing other people and you're making art out of them, but you don't let other people photograph you. I'm like, that's kind of, to, to me, that's a little bit disingenuous. But so it seems like a better goal in life is for us to uh, shoot pictures that uh, show our delight in life, to beautify subjects and stuff like that. And also just realize that you're always changing and evolving as a photographer. So don't put yourself inside, no holes. Keep shooting, smile. And yeah, nowadays with COVID, just wave at people, say hello, shoot pictures, and um, 
in my my last mantra with photography, street photography, and life, and everything in between is is generally like is better to to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. Obviously, asking for permission is totally fine too, but just don't let fear kind of get in your way.